Good morning, Nicole. Morning. Couldn't get my mic to unmute. <laughs> Don't you hate that? I'm trying to adjust my volume here. How's your day? It's good. It's a good Tuesday. Even though you're like in the office over from me. <laughs> it's a busy but good Tuesday. Let me, uh, let me sort things out here. There you go. There we go. That's better. I don't that know. It works for me. Yeah, okay. We were my like, office looks like a disaster. Everyone ignore the office look behind me. Mine is like, oh, I better lower the volume on this. Here we go. Yeah, I'm, mine's boring. I need like a picture in the background or something. I don't know what's going on. A lot of weird hat over here. Where am I? That hat. I need to get rid of that. Uh, morning, <laughs> Tim, Muriel, everyone else who's watching. Good morning. It is December. What is today, Nicole? The 8th? It's the 8th. All right. Hey, have you uh, written your letter to Santa Claus? You know, I have. You did? What'd you ask for? Well, if I tell you, then it won't come true. Or is that just wishes? No, no that's wishes. That's like, wishes. Yeah, that's like your birthday when you blow the candles out and you make a wish. You, you're not supposed to tell anyone. But you can tell everybody what you asked Santa for. Well, you could. Or you could just wait and see if Santa brings you what you want. Okay. What do you ask Santa for? Uh, nothing in particular. I don't think. I'm pretty easy going. I just hope I'm on the good list. Right? So that's my mom. She said we should put a scene draped behind you. Oh, okay. I'm sure we could work with IT to get something. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, I hope everyone's having a good holiday season um, and staying safe uh, with COVID going on. So keep uh, social distancing and wear those masks. That way we can get back to uh, seventy-five percent occupancy. We're at fifty percent occupancy right now, based on the number of um, occupied um, ICU beds in the North Texas region. So wear your mask and practice social distancing, um, and then um, yeah, and then make the holidays more enjoyable, right, Nicole? I'm in. I'm in for that. All right, let's get into it. I think we're covering a couple of, a couple of updates today, but economic development as well. I kind of looked at the slides; kind of a mixture of things, so it'll be fun. And rumor control. We have rumor control. Rumor control. Everyone loves rumor control. All right. Oh, so the picture, y'all were talking about the picture. That is our electric uh, staff. A great group, group of uh, staff members right there. And they actually built the float and about three years ago, two years ago, they built that float for parades. Yeah. And they've added to it a little bit each year. And then yeah. since this year was the first light parade, they strung up lights all across it and I mean, it looks really cool in the pictures I was able to take here, but it looked even better at night yeah. rolling down Maine. Yeah, I saw the pictures. It was really well lit. And uh, they do uh, – th that group is a good group of, of uh, uh, guys because they really do a lot of extra things outside of work hours like that, the parade, and they do it on their own time to come out and engage with the community. And so I appreciate them. So if you guys are watching, I appreciate you. You, you guys are awesome. All right, so some resources. Uh, Nicole, you want to take this, or do you want me to take it? Yeah, sure. So, of course, we have our city website, which is your one-stop shop for all things Weatherford, which is weatherfordtx.gov. Then we have our tourism, city-run tourism, that we work with the chamber on, and that is experienceweatherford.com. And that, what's really unique about that is it's a free listing for businesses that can update themselves. If they are in the city limits, you can also list events that are happening in the city limits, links to Facebook, to any social media or website, really. And then for businesses that are looking to come to town, we have our economic development website, which is Choose Weatherford. And it gives them information on the demographics, why they should be here. And we do believe businesses should be here um, and all of that other fun stuff that they might be looking at when they're trying to find their next spot or location or new headquarters. Then we have our downtown website, which will be updated as that project moves forward, which is heritagesquareweatherford.com. Of course, we are on all major social media. So Facebook, we are Weatherford, Texas. On Instagram, we are City of Weatherford. On Twitter, we are City Weatherford. On YouTube, which is kind of just a holding spot for a lot of our videos, we are Weatherford. And I know that the Weatherford Oil and Gas Company is on there too, but you'll see our logo. We're super easy to spot. 
And then we are also as an agency as city of Weatherford on next door. However, we can't engage with the private posts or the neighborhood posts. Um, the only thing we can engage with is our page. So if you guys have questions, ask us, we'll post about outages and road closures and stuff on next door. So let us know and check us out on all of our social media. And then of course we have the My Weatherford mobile app, which is free. I always love free. And we are actually in the process of redesigning the mobile app at this time. Um, I don't think we're ready to uh, show any of those designs yet, right, right Nicole? Correct, we're, we're not ready. yet. But soon. I've looked at it, Nicole's looked at it, it's, look, it's coming along and we're working on that project. It's coming along very nicely. Uh, but you can actually go in and check out our city calendar on that mobile app. Uh, one of my favorite features um, is not just being able to look up pets that are available for adoption through the animal shelter, but the ability to go in, take a photo of say a pothole on your street uh, and go to the 311 feature within the mobile app and submit that. It goes directly to the specific department. So if it's a pothole, it would go to transportation and public works. Um, I've heard a lot of feedback um, from utilizing the 311 feature in the app or in the mobile app. And a lot of people will tell me that our crews are out there within you know, 24 to 48 hours. Um, sometimes they'll extend beyond the 48 hours if they have other projects they're working on, but they get out there pretty quickly. So it's really, really cool. Download it uh, if you can uh, today. That way uh, you can be uh, getting information from the mobile app. It's called My Weatherford. And I just put links in the comments too for everyone. Oh, perfect. And then we have our uh, Weatherford Eats mobile app. And so this was really developed uh, in response to the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, when a lot of our restaurants were having to go to curbside pickup or delivery, uh, we wanted to create a mobile app uh, that allowed them to go in and uh, make updates uh, at their convenience. So businesses can go in and uh, make, make updates anytime by going to experienceweatherford.com and that feeds right into the Weatherford Eats mobile app. Uh, but it lists most, if not all of the restaurants within the city limits of Weatherford um, and it's free as well. Uh, but I use it a lot of times I forget like all the restaurants that we have, Nicole, and I'll go in the mobile app and I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm going to try that out today. So it's really cool to like explore uh, and find new locations uh, or eateries across the city limits of Weatherford. And I like free. Again, it's free. It doesn't take up that much space on your phone either. So upcoming events. So Last time we talked about the parade and all of that. This time we still have Radiance at the ranch. If you guys haven't been, go. It's $30 a car load. And I do believe, according to their Facebook page, that's up to eight people in a car um, for general admission. If you want to pay for VIP, it's $50 a car. That gets you those really cool glasses that help 3D affect the uh, lights for you and some hot chocolate. Check it out. It takes about 30 minutes to go through. It kind of depends on the speed you go. Go listen to Christmas music if you went earlier in the season. I know that they've added a lot of, like they've changed up the route and they've added, I think the owner, I saw him on Saturday at our parade. I think he said they've added about eight new areas or like he said it was more than 60 new displays total throughout, but like the way they reworked it, they were able to get some more areas in. So go check that out. And then coming from our parks and recs department, we have a holiday in the park pathway of lights, which is like, our response to COVID. So since we can't do the big gathering for holiday in the park this year, we're doing the pathway of lights, which most of those displays are usually up during holiday in the park, but that starts this Thursday. So December 10th through the 30th and that's six to 9 PM every night or 9 30, sorry, six to 9 30 PM every night. And then for a updated schedule as we go throughout on the food vendors that will be there, that's listed on that event on facebook so check it out and then if you want to learn more about these events and other events like i've seen i know peacocks has been posting when they have santa come out for pictures and someone posted that they hit the grinch out for pictures and those are all listed on experienceweatherford.com so check it out for all those fun holiday activities to do with the family oh you're up this is your this is your moment to shine nicole wait let me bring you on camera no me, i was like yeah. a face when i do it there you go <laughs> Rumor control. <laughs> there is no outback at this time. And since it's our first rumor control of the day, we get to do our fun little spiel. If there is a business you guys want to see come to town, the best thing you can do as a consumer is reach out and let them know that there is a want and a need for them here in Weatherford. Um, and then, I mean, our economic development 
guys and girls are always working to try to bring new businesses in. But the best thing that we can do is let them know that there's a want and a need. And then they'll take a look at us. They'll go to chooseleatherford.com that I talked about earlier. And then hopefully we get them to come here. Awesome. Way to nail the rumor control. We need t-shirts that say rumor control, I think. That's a thing. So if we'll brand anyone it. is watching, check it out. <laughs> check it out. <laughs> All right. So we got here. Oh, there we go. All right. So this is the part where we'll talk about economic development. And just like Nicole had her spiel about rumor control, I'm going to give my spiel about, is that a word spiel, Nicole? You know, I use it, so I'm hoping. <laughs> we'll go with it. Uh, all right. So economic development uh, is very interesting. Um, and it's kind of fun to dive into when you when you look at how it operates, except especially from a city level perspective. Um, so we do uh, a lot of data collection uh, over in economic development, which is uh, headed off by Kristen Pegues and with the help of the city manager and the assistant city manager, they kind of all work together. It kind of ties in with um, development neighborhood services as well. Um, so we can get data. We work with different types of companies that it provides us with data. This data comes from cell phone usage. So um, it's all GPS driven off of cell phone data. Um, so these companies collect this information and then we're able to obtain it um, from those companies. So we have a primary trade area and a secondary trade area uh, that affects the city limits of Weatherford. Uh, the primary trade area can, uh, consists of 190,000 people. Uh, those 190,000 people within that zone shop three to five times per week. And then our secondary trade area includes 360,000 people. Uh, those, those individuals shop one to two times a week or a couple of times per month. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like on a map. So this is the primary trade area. That's where the 190,000 people come into play. So within that zone, there's around 190,000 people, which is based off of census data as well. That's why it's important to participate in the census uh, when it when it comes time to do that. Um, the primary trade area extends over to Fort Worth around loop, the, the west side of Loop 820 and as far west as Lone Camp Santo area. Um, so we know people are coming from those areas to participate in commerce within the city limits of Weatherford. I think we often think, think that we're in a silo uh, and that we only control our market here, but it's influenced by those that do not live inside the city limits. So they come here, uh, they spend their money, um, they pay sales tax, which goes back into the general fund here at the city of uh, Weatherford, which gives you all better streets, better infrastructure, the list goes on, better events, just like I said, the list goes on and on and on. Um, so it's important. Economic development plays a key role uh, in our operations and how we can make Weatherford even better. Now, the secondary trade area that goes uh, a little bit further into Loop 820 out towards Fort Worth. It goes as far north as Graham, uh, and that's a long ways away, folks. And then it goes as far south as Stephenville and as far west as Cisco, Eastland area. Um, so people are coming from that distance to participate in commerce. And if we go back, you'll notice that that includes 360,000 people total. They shop one to two times a week or a couple of times per month. That's pretty frequent. Um, and that is, uh, or allows us to capture a uh, significant sales, do sales tax um, to make Weatherford even better, uh, which makes the quality of life even better for our citizens. Um, so you can quickly see the importance of economic development. Oh, Nicole? Rumor control. I'm sad about this one. I really am. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because I would love to get a Bats Pro Shops or a Cabela's. How great would that be? I mean, it would definitely help like Christmas shopping but, for everyone, for like dads or the people who like outdoors or, I mean, yeah. I would shop for myself there. So yeah. And it's kind of a tourist attraction too, but I will say here in Weatherford, what we do have are two great locate. And I, and I, if I, if I miss something, I apologize, but things that come to my mind are places like Gibson's that has been in Weatherford since forever. Teskies. I thought you were going to try to pull a year out. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Teskies out to the West. Now we have, Academy, which is your big box type outdoor store. Um, just all kinds of other, I'm trying, am I missing something? Teskey's Academy. We have Atwoods coming. Atwoods is coming. I yep. mean, technically if you look at like tractor, Orschland, supply. tractor supply. Oh yeah. Orschland's a big fan of that. Yeah. yeah. So we've got a lot of other options, even though we don't have a Bass Pro or a Cabela's and uh, Justin said, aren't Bass Pro shops usually built near large lakes? Like 
yeah, <laughs> does Lake no. Orchard count as a large lake? Some of them are, Justin. Some of them are some not of them. anywhere near yeah. lake. Yeah. Um, yeah. but somehow this keeps popping up in like all of the online groups and stuff. It's yes. the rumor of this or Cabela's. Um, not at this time, but we'd love to see them come here. I exactly. Mean, exactly. All right. That's a good rumor control. So then next right. is our applications for permits and ongoing projects out of development and neighborhood services. So we have Office Space and Wellness Center at 1951 Fort Worth Highway. They have their revised occupancy request approved. The Door Christian Fellowship at 701 Palo Pinto also had that revised occupancy request approved. Academy of Korean Martial Arts. Um, and I don't know if he realized that he gave me the same address for both of those. So I'll check with Tim on that, guys. Um, that was also, they had the same uh, revised occupancy request approved, as did Girlfish Boutique, which will be at 128 York Avenue. And then I'm going to say it, and I'm probably going to botch it. So if you're watching, I apologize. Is it Eliana Aesthetics and Laser? I don't know if I said that right, but that's at 1510 Santa Fe Drive. Same revised, uh, actually there's a, their revised occupancy request is currently pending. Whitestone Premium Meats at 1801 Santa Fe Drive had their tenant improvement issued at, um, as did Weatherford College Edition at 225 College Park Drive, but theirs was a commercial. Edgewise 8 Brewing, which you guys follow them on Facebook. They're updating as their construction and everything inside continues. Their tenant improvement was issued. I know a lot of people are really excited for them to open. We're excited for them to open. Finn's Bar and Grill at 810 South Main Street had their tenant improvement issued, and that is where Saltwater used to be, guys. Texas Roadhouse at 20, uh, wow, 201 West Interstate I-20 had their commercial permit issued. Guys, that build is coming along. I drove by the other day and actually made an intentive idea to look at it, and it has changed. Blue Beacon, which is at 1712 Banks, had their commercial permit issued. I know that they have the path in and out of the wash for the trucks done, and they were adding the big rocks and more landscaping and stuff and finishing up some details and stuff inside, and they still have to finish the outside. Um, and then... Storehouse storage at 917 West I-20 commercial permit was issued. Safe keeping storage, over, uh, self storage over off of North Rick Williamson had their commercial permit issued. And then we also have quick stop at Rick Williamson FM 920 and site development is in review there. And then city council recently approved the Russell, um, these commercial projects. So Russell feed store, which will be at 2610 South Main Street. That site plan review is in progress currently in Atwoods at Fort Worth Highway and Azel Highway. Conditional use permit approved, finalizing plat. And for Karen, who is listening, that will go in behind the circle K. Or is it circle, not circle C? Wow. Circle C. Excuse circle me, K. guys. No, it's right? circle, yes, the Valero circle K right there. Let yeah, me bring up. Right there. Me, It'll be right yeah. behind it on the. So, if you, so they're actually going into that plot of land behind it. Yeah, right here. So downtown Weatherford is here and then right here in this area Can right you here. Can you a little bit more, Blake? Because that's kind of hard to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll, we'll go to satellite mode. So it's going to so go that, into that lot area behind yeah. there, that really big open area. Yeah. So basically, Azel Highway is what everybody refers to that. So road Malt Shop as. is the little yellow, orangey dot thing right yeah. there. And then you've got the gas station. Map's a little outdated, but it'll be going in behind there. And one of the cool things that you can go to on our weatherfortx.com website is go to, uh, let me, let me uh, start from the top for you all. When we're not live, you can go get information. Uh, go to departments, development and neighborhood services, uh, planning division, development projects. And you can see all of this information. So there's a rendering of the Atwoods and the map. Um, you can look at under construction and subdivisions as well. Um, so this information is out there if we're not live and you just are, are curious, you can go check it out. They try to update this page pretty frequently. Um, that way you all are all in the loop of what's happening. Uh, but that's a cool resource when we're not live. Let me hide these things. Got a lot going on here. There we go. Um, so yeah, so check that out, weatherfortx.gov, and then just uh, follow um, the instructions that I just showed you all on the screen and you can uh, stay up to date.
Uh, let's see. Is anyone going after LaMadeline? So, um, not that I'm aware of. So one of the things, so Yvonne brings up a good question. We talk about this often. Um, so what we do, this, this slide right here that we're showing is probably the most important slide and you're probably going, why it's just a bunch of bullet points. This really shows our role in economic development. Um, so a couple of things that we do is, uh, it's our job to really market Weatherford, uh, in the sense of like, for example, on chooseweatherford.com, uh, potential developers can go see like land availability. Um, they can look at different retail, um, or commercial zones within the city limits of Weatherford. Uh, one of the questions that we often get asked is why are we not putting in more businesses on the north end of town? So you really have to look at the fundamental root of what America as a whole is founded on, and that's a free market. So if you own a business, we can't necessarily tell you where to build if you're interested in, in moving your company or starting a company in the city limits of Weatherford. It's your choice, it's a free market. But what we can do is provide you with land availability, uh, within commercial zones. So you have residential zones and you have commercial zones. Commercial zones are where your uh, retail or in industry, your industrial sites are gonna go. So we'll advertise and show you those land availabilities and then we'll help you with the process. And our role is really to monitor, and monitor is a bad word, but to assist in the process of making sure that you're permitted correctly, that you're following proper electrical guidelines, that you're following proper building guidelines that match with the overall a strategic plan of the city of Weatherford. And so that's important. That's our role. We do not dictate uh, what businesses come and go. There's lots of rumors that go on out there. Uh, one of the rumors that I heard about was when Bucky's was looking at coming to uh, Weatherford. And then uh, for reasons that were on the Bucky side of things, uh, they changed, they chose to switch gears and it wasn't just our community. It was multiple communities across the state of Texas. Um, and they're looking to expand out towards other states so they chose not to come to Weatherford. I've seen rumors out there that oh, Weatherford made it difficult. It's not, it's, not, <laughs> it's not the role of economic development. We really don't decide what businesses come and go. We just assist in the process. So that's a great question that uh, Yvonne just asked. Um, so we're always pursuing potential businesses if it's a good fit for, for Weatherford and they wanna come here, a uh, good for, fit for them. Um, so we don't specifically target one business over another. We just provide the information and, and uh, we'll go to uh, different types of trade shows uh, or economic development. Let, let me back up, not trade shows, but economic development conferences and things of that nature. Uh, and we, we will have booths set up advertising uh, what Weatherford is all about and the land availability. And so those businesses send, send representatives out and those representatives basically uh, gather information um, to decide where they want to relocate or start start their business. I hope that all makes sense to everyone the way I explained that. Um, so it's very, very interesting. And before I worked for the city of Weatherford, I really didn't understand the role of economic development. And it's pretty cool when you, when you look at what all they do. It's quite fascinating. All right. Um, so <laughs> other projects, go ahead, Nicole. I, I've been talking a while. I'll let you talk. <laughs> Um, so other projects, so code compliance, just wanted to, us to give you guys a few reminders to keep weeds and grass under control. Um, and then regular maintenance, even in the off season. So right now would be considered the off season can make a huge difference. I know I've had some people reach out and I know that code has given people warnings or whatnot, and they typically do give a warning before you get a ticket. Um, just a reminder to keep your lawn looking nice. Um, studies have shown that when communities take care and ensure that they keep themselves beautiful and trash free and stuff that people take more pride and those communities do tend to have a happier um wow i just took the word from it tend to have a higher happy rate rating from the community members that live there and then also for garage sale signs um do remember that there's a limit of two signs per property on the property they can't be larger than two square feet each and you get up to four directional signs. Those also cannot be larger than two square feet each. Um, and they have to be placed on private property. You cannot put them on nonprofit property. You cannot put them on commercial property. You cannot adhere them to electrical poles or utility stuff. Um, they will be picked up. You can put them out 24 hours before your sale and they have to be picked up within 24 hours at the end of the sale. Sales can last three days. So like Friday through Sunday. Um, so they can't go over three consecutive days and then use social media pages and groups, guys. I know there's a ton out there. I'm in a lot of them. There are a ton out there. So check them out. Um, and that's just a reminder because we've had a lot of people in the past. Um, I know we have people say that 
we've never really enforced it in the past. Well, we didn't have the manpower to, and people didn't take advantage like they do now. I mean, if you drive by any given Monday through Tuesday, you'll see signs everywhere that code is still working to pick up because people just don't clean up after themselves. Yeah. And then also a quick reminder, since we are in that off season, that RVs and boats need to be parked or stored on impervious surfaces and they cannot be stored in your front yard. Oh. Rumor control. Hey, I feel like we already talked about this. I kind of stole the thunder on that one, didn't I? You did. No, hey, it's okay. <laughs> Shoot another one. No Bucky's. No Bucky's. So again, uh, Bucky's, as you all know, uh, there was lots of rumors going on when they were looking at Weatherford. Um, but they kind of have a, uh, they changed their business model and they're expanding uh, to places like Georgia. Uh, and we weren't the only community that they backed out on across the state of Texas. And my understanding is they don't plan to build any more in Texas because they're expanding uh, to other states. So their brand is growing. Um, and people that, that's what I think that it's so fascinating to me because I think people who come here for tourism purposes, like vacations or visiting family, they stop at Bucky's going through Texas. And so, yeah. The word is out about it. <laughs> I think it'll start to be a nationwide thing now. Uh, and so that's kind of what happened with Bucky's here in Weatherford. Um, we were close. We were close, but uh, maybe someday. Right, Nicole? Maybe someday. Maybe someday. All right. This is a really cool map. Uh, this is going to show you uh, just in a snapshot. Uh, and this this map can also be located at the development page that I uh I don't know if it's on the development page or if it's on the engineering page, Blake. I saw, I, oh, crap, crap. Yeah, let me go look here real quick. I think it's here, right here. Oh, wait, let me bring my tab over. There we go. So if you go to uh, Development Neighborhood Services Planning Division, uh, you can locate it. These are current residential projects right here. And then let's see. Yeah, it looks like they have residential on there. But I know that they are both under um, our engineering division. I know Bill updates it. Okay. They're perfect. under the, that current project. He updates it there. Perfect. Uh, so again, uh, like Nicole mentioned, this is available uh, when we're not live uh, on social media. So you can always access this information at weatherfortx.gov. And then, uh, but anyways, this is a, a snapshot of the current non-residential developments or projects taking place across the city limits of Weatherford. Um, so this is your commercial projects kind of shows you the activity and then current residential. Uh, so housing, this is the current projects that are taking place within the city limits of Weatherford. I'm, I find these maps fascinating because, you know, and I'm guilty of this, Nicole, I'll drive around and I'll think, man, there's not a lot going on, but really there is <laughs> uh, a lot going on, especially when you look at like the commercial projects. Um, and that, that includes things like remodels of current, uh, retail locations and things of that nature. So um, existing businesses are finding new ways to market themselves, which is really cool as well. Pretty fun. All right. Oh, and there is the DNS development projects, a screenshot of that uh, website that I've been showing you all throughout the broadcast. All right. There we go. This is where we wait awkwardly. Yeah. So, guys, um, <laughs> before we end the show and Blake goes to the next slide with the logo ending and everything, um, if you guys have questions, you can always message our Facebook page. I try to get back to you as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, you can also comment on our posts that we make. I know we're trying to we try to do a lot of informative posts throughout time, so that way we're not just pushing out some stuff, but we're also reminding you guys of the different services and things we offer, especially digitally that you can access at any time of the day. But yep. And as always, if you ever have specific questions for Nicole or Mar Nicole or myself, uh, <laughs> tongue tied there, uh, you can go, uh, you can email us or give us a call. Our information is on weatherfortx.gov. We're always available. We love talking to you all. We love engaging with you all. And uh, we have fun jobs, don't we, Nicole? We do. Very lucky. Very lucky to be with City of Weatherford. We love it here. All right. Until – will we be live? Are we planning to be live next week, Nicole, with the holidays? Yeah, next summer? week's not Christmas, right? Yeah. No, yes. So yes, we'll next be... week. No the week of Christmas because we're yep. both off. Yep. All right. So stay safe. Remember to social distance and wear that mask. That way we can go back to 75% occupancy. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. See you all next week. See ya.